And I'm back. And what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to disassemble the upper intake manifold on this 2003 Ford F-150, the 4.2 liter engine. I'm going to start by disconnecting the battery. Then I'm going to disconnect these intake air hoses, this one, take out the air filter assembly and make some room here so I can get out that uh, upper intake manifold. Get that out of the way. Okay. Just connect the throttle cable. And this one's for the cruise control. Get those disconnected. All right, there's a vacuum hose here. I'll take that off. There. And we've got another vacuum hose here that goes to the brake booster. Okay, pull that aside. Got a connector that goes to the throttle position sensor. Get rid of that. And we've got another sensor up here on top that goes to the idle air control solenoid. Take that off. There's a coolant hose right here. Little guy. Okay. Okay, we start loosening bolts on this cover. Okay, so I got all the bolts out. And I've taken out the two bolts here on the idle air control solenoid. And then this top of the cover will come off now. Pull it out like that, turn it over, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take out the bolts, there's, uh, I think there's eight bolts that hold this down and we'll be able to pull that off and there's a few things now that we've got to disconnect from the side of it. There's a, I see a vacuum hose over here and there's a little a couple of bolts over here so we'll have to get that, those disconnected. Then we'll lift that whole thing up out of there. Okay so on the side of this lower part there's a, a vacuum hose that has to be disconnected right here. That pulls off and there's a component here that has to be unbolted from the side of it. It has two 10 millimeter heads on it. Okay. Looks like one of the studs came out with that one, but that's okay, it's disconnected. Okay, so the bolts that hold this lower part in are eight millimeter. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up, oh, okay, there it goes. There's a little connector right here. Gotta disconnect that. And we just about got it. Just take your time, be careful, don't break anything off. The other side of this, so on this little thing here, there's an eight millimeter nut, has to be removed. And uh, there's another coolant line right here. This one here's gotta come off. Okay, get those disconnected. Let's see here. All right. Okay, everything appears to be free. Come out slow. Okay. Okay, so get the lower piece here. All right. Right at the very back, you see there? See that piece right back there? That's the intake manifold runner control. You can see how impossible it is to get to if you don't have all of this out. So, you know, what's recommended is if you do have to take all this apart for service, is at a minimum to change the bushings because these little bushings fail sometimes, these little white bushings. This vehicle is a, a 2003 and this repair is being done in 2023. 
This is a 20 year old vehicle and that's probably the original control valve back there so I'm going to change it and uh, I don't want to have to realize at some later date that that is malfunctioning because it's a big job to get to it. Okay, so here's the lower half of the clamshell that has your throttle body on it. Okay, now, look in here. These are the isolator bolts. Okay, there's eight of them. And they have the grommet on it that has to be changed. I'll show you there. Okay, this grommet right here. Okay. So you can either buy the whole assembly, which costs a little more with new bolts, and there's no need to do that because the bolts are still good. It's just these grommets have to be changed when you pull this apart. Okay, so let's get those out of there. So, and while I have this out, I'm going to clean all these surfaces, clean all these passages, and we'll take this old gasket out, put the new one in. And there's these isolator little gaskets here too that has to be renewed. I have some new ones. We'll change those. Okay, so here's the top of the clamshell. Okay. That's the front of it there like that. And we'll do the same thing. We'll get this cleaned out a bit. Okay, so here's all the components of the upper intake manifold. This is the clamshell, it's the bottom of it here. It has the throttle body on the front of it. And here's the top of the clamshell, okay. And this is a, a new uh, intake manifold runner control motor. Okay, here's the, the old one here. Okay, and we've got a new gasket that goes around the clamshell and these isolator gaskets that go on the bottom of there. Okay, the other thing we have is we have these little uh, retainers for these rods. And that's the ones I got right there, they'll work. It's a Dorman uh, 470-99 part number. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I put this new motor in is I'm gonna go back and see if I can get at the retainers on the end of those runners. There's the lever and there's the old bushing that's kind of blackened around it. But that's the bushing that's got to be changed. And then on this side, better not, let me see. See right there. See that little square in the end of the rod? So there's a, that's where that bushing goes into that little square hole in the end of the rod. You can see that little lever in the mirror. I'll just put my finger on it there, I'll show you. See? Yep. I don't know if I can see that right there. Just that square right where my finger is. And that uh, the rod from the motor moves this little rod and it in turn opens and closes the butterflies up in here. Okay, so I managed to get that bushing into the bracket. And how I did it was I put uh, black tape on my finger, sticky side out, I wrapped it around. And then what I did was I looked back there and I pressed another finger against the lever 
and came back with an impression of which way the square was facing. It was kind of off to the off that way a bit. So then I put the bushing on the tape in the same orientation and I gently put it down in there and moved it back and forth until I could feel it in the hole and I pressed it in. And I'd broken two or three trying to do it because if they're not lined up with the square they'll snap. They'll snap a tab off. And I just looked at it in the mirror. I don't know if you can see it or not but I can see through the hole that all four tabs are intact. So that's in there. I got black tape. And I've got the, the bushing stuck to the black tape on my finger. And I'm gonna put that in. This one I can see without the mirror. Let's see. It's right. The orientation is right like that. Let's see here. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get that other bottom tab in there. Oh. That seem right to you. Let's see. Boy, that's hard to get in there. And they're so easy to break. The tabs are so easy to break. If you don't have it right. Uh, let's see. That should go straight in there. Oh, there it is. See it coming out? There. All four tabs came through. And that's the important part. Sometimes you can push them in, you think they're in, and it'll have broken one tab off. And that's, that's enough to make the, the rod fall out in operation. You've got to have all four tabs come through this end of it, see? Three, not enough. Two, not enough. Bring the rod up and just a gentle push and there the rod's in. And we've still got four tabs showing. Okay, so that's the that's all four bushings. On uh, So there's two rods bushing on each end. So the EGR valve mounted here allows exhaust gas to run into the central chamber of the intake manifold and up these holes. There's one in each port. There's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And these holes can become plugged and cause trouble with that system. So we can see the ports here that come from that EGR passage. And I'm just using a tool to clean out any carbon, any build up in those holes. They don't look too bad actually. They weren't plugged like some people have found them to be. And I've used a piece of wire to probe down deeper than this tool will go, but that's pretty much the depth of it there. It goes into this chamber here. You can see this passage that's cast into the intake manifold. So that passage brings exhaust gas uh, that's allowed in by the EGR valve under certain circumstances. Not at idle and not at full load, but at uh, sort of a medium load. It allows exhaust gas to be introduced to the intake stream and it helps reduce the, the exhaust gas temperature overall and uh, that reduces NOx emissions, harmful emissions. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna spray some carburetor cleaner solvent down in these ports, and then I'm gonna let it soak for several hours. Okay, I'm gonna take out the EGR valve. that line on the side of it that's the, that brings the exhaust in from the manifold. OK, 
Okay. There's the other bolt. There's the vacuum line. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna introduce some air into this EGR port. See what happens. It should come out those should come up through here. Definitely feel it coming out those holes. So there's no blockage in there. There's nothing between the ports and the EGR valve. Okay, so I've got a vacuum source on another vehicle here. And I'm just gonna see if I can cycle this PGR valve. See when I take the vacuum off of it, it moves down. Okay. Open, close. Okay, so the valve's good. We'll spray this out, blow it out with compressed air, and put that back on the engine. Okay, so... Okay, so we got the EGR valve bolted back on the engine. And here's that pipe. Snug that down. Okay. Now, this is all the fun you ever want to have. All in one job. It's down in a bad spot. You got to be on your head to do it, pretty much. You got to use mirrors, and extensions, and weird stuff. And, uh, but you know, don't farm this out to some garage. Why don't you just have all this fun like I did in your backyard? You know, this is, this is what mechanicing is all about. You know, getting into these little spots and having all this fun, you know? You know, don't, uh, don't let the mechanics at the garage have all this fun. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta enjoy some of life yourself, right? And I don't think you've really lived until you've tried to change one of these things. Because it is, I don't know, I don't know. It's, uh, the camera doesn't really represent the position I'm in. I'm, I got a piece of foam over the, the catch for the, for the hood, the hood latch, because that's been digging into my guts. And uh, I'm face down pretty much on a, about a 30 degree angle down into here. And between burning myself on the trouble light and dropping stuff down underneath that I have to get out and retrieve, it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a joy. But uh, almost getting it there, just about done. Tighten up those three bolts and we're gonna hook our connector up here to the top and double check everything and then we can, we can call this almost done. Okay, now I gotta get the uh, upper intake manifold ready to go in. I got new uh, grommets for the isolator bolts. And here's the pack right here. Okay. All right. Now I got, I got one off. I've just been um, rolling them off the end and I'll just put the new one on. So, okay, that's it. So we'll just do that with all of them. And then before we put them in, we'll just put a drop of oil on here and they'll go down. 
and that's what holds the lower part of that clamshell onto the intake manifold. There, like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take out those rags and take a quick peek down in each of those ports, make sure that nothing had fallen down in them. And uh, I'm gonna turn that over and sit it on top of the intake manifold. Make sure those don't fall out when you turn it over. Okay, here we go. Make sure they didn't fall out. They're all good, they're all there. Last look under there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so these uh, isolator bolts on the lower part of that clamshell have to be tightened in a certain sequence. And roughly, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So basically, you're tightening from the center to the outside. And there's uh, two steps to the torque. You uh, initially torque them to 53 inch pounds, and the final is 89 inch pounds. And I got my little quarter inch drive inch pound torque wrench here. Okay, I got them torqued to 53 in sequence, and now 89 inch-pounds. Okay, we've got to put this seal on, and uh, then the top cover. And there's a little tab on it right here. It goes right down in here. And that way, you get it in the right spot. Like that. It goes. There it is. There it is. Very important that you use new gaskets because if you don't, you will get a vacuum leak. And that's something you don't want. Check. Oh, it's sticking out there a little bit. being very careful not to drop anything in those holes as well. Okay, I got the upper part of the clamshell ready to put on. I've got it, the edge all wiped off. Okay. Here goes nothing. Real gentle. Don't want to move that gasket off there. There it is. Okay, get the bolts in there and torque these ones to 89 inch pounds. We're almost there. And here's the bolts. When I took them out, I put them in a bottle so I wouldn't lose any. Okay, I just got the upper clamshell bolted down. Now, they call for 89 inch-pounds on all of these bolts. And it's easy to do on the front ones, but there's three or four across the back that are very hard to get to. So, you know, uh, your call, you can try and get a, a little torque wrench in there. But, you know, you can experiment with, you know, uh, just a wrench on, on a bolt that's already torqued to 89 and kind of see, you know, how tight it is. And just go back in there with a, a ratcheting uh, wrench, you know, the, the back end of a wrench that's that uh, ratchets, or you know, you can uh, you can eventually get a socket on there, but it's you know you got to be upside down on top of the engine and get your uh, get your hands in there. There's three or four across the back, are very hard to get to. So what I did was I just snugged them, 
you know, I didn't over tighten them. Basically the the reason for that low torque, 89 inch pounds, is that this is plastic and you know, they don't want you to break it. So if you can get them nice and snug, you know, but not too tight, you should be fine. But it's your call. Okay, I got it all back together. The only thing missing right now is the cover over this throttle. I'm just missing a screw for it, so I'm gonna put that on in a minute. I did a good check on everything. Let's give it a test fire, see what happens. <laughs> 